students in today's session we are going to talk about data interpretation some of the techniques and some of the tricks there when uh, i believe when you when some of the students i think they can relate there that uh, when they were attempting the paper they were not able to you know attempt all the questions or some of the students might have been there who you know who saw the questions of data interpretation and they thought oh these questions are too big let's just let's just skip them through and through that's not going to happen if you will have a look at this video i'm not going to tell you each and everything how you're supposed to do the questions but yes i'm going to help you out with some of the basic basic tricks that can really help you out when you are going to do your questions of data interpretation so you know different type of questions let me give you a brief introduction of what data interpretation is data interpretation is all about visualization how you see your data what you can actually infer out of it you can get different type of questions you can get questions in pie charts bar graph tables or caselets as uh, observing the previous year questions of CLAT, we are usually getting caselets and the most important thing when we talk about caselets are percentages fine i'll give you some basic technique there also pie chart bar graph table and caselet i'm going to talk about each and every data here right we are going to talk about basics here. what where do we miss what do we need to uh, focus on i'm going to talk about all these points the four basic things i will be covering in my uh, class today is simplify right the first point the first important point is simplification whenever you get the data try to simplify it because you know you are not uh, um, you you won't be given questions which are where the data is directly mentioned everything is directly mentioned right the data would be mentioned but you will have to find out some meaning out of it right just to simplify it approximation some of the students really miss this big point solving the things with unit digits calculating percentages right so i'm going to talk about these four basic points today so let me start with the approximation why am i going to talk about approximation today see whenever you get the data whenever you simplify it whenever you're calculating percentages or whatever you know there are usually numbers that are that come in division you have to divide something you have to take averages you know there are so many things you have to calculate percentages so there is a numerator there is a denominator what happens when you have the data for example you have a number that looks like uh, let us say 136 upon 91 now this will take time Right, if you think, and if the number is bigger than this, that is obviously going to take more time. So, how does approximation helps you out here? You know, I would give you the basics. There are many students who have been asking me, ma'am, how to approximate? How to approximate if you have a number, if you have a digit which is less than 100? Always check out the options. You usually have A, B, C, D, four options. Check out these options. If the options are really very 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 close right you are having the number you are having the uh, answer let us say the answer is 1.1 then it is 1.25 the answer is answer looks like this then do not approximate fine then in that case you have to calculate the data but usually you do not get options which are these close so what you can do check out the numbers here check out the numerator check out the denominator if you can see that they are less than 100 you know you can change one digit for example if the number looks like this 136 upon 91 uh, if i approximate it to 136 upon 90 this becomes really easy for me you know uh, you are well versed with the tables of let us say till 1 to at least 15 9 you just have to divide 136 by 9 in this case here, if I'm going to divide it with 91, I'm going to get approximately, you know, the exact number that I'm going to get here is 1.49. And if I'm going to divide it with 90, I'm going to get 1.51. Now, both these data, if we approximate, they both will give us 1.5 and this will also give us 1.5 only. So, the answer is, if you are, if we are having options, we, if we are having options such as 2.5, we are having option 1.5, we are having 3.5 and so on. So, in this case, this data will come out to be correct 
right here if you are having data which is less than 100 approximate one number one or two number max to max if you are having data which is you know uh, more than uh, 100 but less than 500 you can approximate numbers up to two or three numbers you can approximate and you will get the answer again i'll always say check the options but you will get an answer which is uh, near your correct answer which is too much near to your correct answer okay uh, and if the data is above 500 well you can approximate up to five numbers that is the rule of approximation and if you'll approximate it this way it's going to save your time why am i teaching you approximation it always saves your time look at the options you know sometimes you're having a bar chart where you need not even calculate the data and you can just have a look at the data and you can get the answer if you're having five questions trust me one or two questions would be there where you can just have a look at the data and you can calculate it let me talk about unit digits so there's a table that i have prepared for you if i'm having this is a table i'm having k suppose there are two products a and b and they are divided into you know their sale you are talking about sales it's taking what sale is taking place in quarter one two three and four i need to know so this is a simple question what is the total sale of product a for all the quarters right product a what's the total sale here you know what you can do you will start calculating the complete data right you'll start adding up the whole data what you can do this is a very basic thing what you can do if you know how to you know you know the trick there just calculate the just add the unit digits if you are having two unit digits which are same calculate the addition of last two digits no harm there right if i'm going to add it up i'm going to have you know five and five that's going to give me 10 then i'm having nine and eight that's going to give me 27 so last digit will come out as seven fine seven is my answer option b that's it you do it this way so that's the second point which i want the students to know okay, you can calculate you have most of the data you know you'll get many questions where you have to either add the column you have to add the uh, uh, row you have to add the column you'll get so many things there so you can simply add it and uh, if one more thing if i'm having uh, and uh, you'll have to add it you'll have to divide it one more thing if i'll uh, if i'm having a data which looks like you know i'm having here uh, three you know and i'm having here a division let us say uh, by seven so you know if i'm in the option if i'm having a b c d if i'm having an option that looks like nine in the unit digit click that because seven into nine gives you 63 right so this is the way add it divided quickly add it multiplied fine or if you have to calculate percentages let me go with the another point with the next point which is percentages there uh, before that i'll come on to simplification now why am i talking about simplification that's the most important part that we are going to deal with usually uh, most of the questions that we are getting here we do get the questions of caselets right now the questions are the usually caselet for example this is a question in class 10th of a school there are three sections each student has a particular uh, each section has a particular number of boys and girls total number of boys in 10th are 90 and so on the question goes on here you have to, you know, aapke samne question aaya and what's the first thing that you need to do here? You have to divide the data. You have to simplify it. I, I'm going to do, chikye, my first question pe aage si and the question looks like something, what's the total number of students in uh, section A? So I'm not going to look at the data again and again, check it out and calculate it. No, I'm going to make a table here. Always in case of case, let's make a table, clear the data, simplify it. For example, I can see that uh, three sections are there. Fine, I'll write it A, B, C and make and try that you make this data always in the form of rows and column. It need not to be very neat. You know, nobody's going to come and check uh, your paper, okay, what calculation, how you are doing the calculation. We just have to give the answers there. So number of boys, number of girls and uh, you can write a total here. What's going to happen? This way, this is the way you sort your data out. Take a total number of boys in 10th are 90. Okay, so total. Here I'll again take a total. Total number of boys are 90. A third of which are in section A. A third means one third of it. They are in section A. So when you start solving the data, it becomes very easy. Like the sorting of the data becomes easy once it comes in the form of table. That's called simplifying the data. Fine. You are not going to have very tough simplification. If you go and check the, out the previous year question, you realize that simplify karne ki thi. How are we going to do the simplification easy? Le last point, which was the most important point, was of percentages. Do not miss. You know, you will check out most of the questions, you will realize that most of the uh, things 
they end up with percentages right most of the questions they uh, come down to solving the percentages for example here i have given you a question but before that i'll still give you one more thing i'll uh, still give you one more point here when i am solving the questions of data interpretation or when i am solving the percentages don't treat the percentages as really for example if i say ke uh, give me 25% of something right for example i say ke give me 25% of 360 So 25% of 360. How do you calculate it? 25% of 360. I mean, I need to calculate it. Okay, I'll cancel this one. Zero, one, zero, five goes two times. Five goes uh, five times, and this will go. You will get yeah. This will go eighteen times. So we are going to calculate it this way. We are going to get the answer is 90. Don't treat it this way, right? Treat the percentages in either fractions or multiplication. it trust me is going to sort out many things you will be able to do the answer in a better way right for example 25% what is 25% it's 1/4 1/4 of 360 i know 36 upon 4 is 9 right these are the basic tables that we have done in our school so uh, 36 upon 4 that gives me 9 i'm having one more zero 90 is the answer similarly when you deal with 50% know what it is 50% is half when we are talking about 75% what it is bring it down uh, to the fraction it is 3/4 right for example take the question here uh, solve 12.5% uh, of 56 so what is 12.5% 12.5% is nothing but it's half of 25 if 25 is 1/4 so 12.5 is 1/8 right so 1/8 of 56 56 upon 8 that's going to give me 7 as the answer right this is how you solve the questions fine uh coming on to the other points for example look at the question if talking about techniques i'll talk about the first question here question of pie chart most of the students when i give these kind of questions they are confused first of all why are they confused there first of all these percentages you are having per pie chart pie chart when we talk about here we are having 360 degree in the center right basic thing the 360 degree in the center that represent your complete 100% right make sure that you calculate these percentages only and they will always give you 100% so 360 degree in the center represents 100% so if i want to represent this 20% or if i want to uh, calculate okay, what what will be the you know amount that has been spent on uh, miscellaneous items that's going to be 20% and that 20% use the unitary method 100% represents 360 degree 1% would be 360 upon 100 or i can write simply 3.6 So what will my twenty percent give? Three point six into twenty. Let's sort the data this way. For example, uh, let's talk about this question. Approximately, how many degrees would be there in the central angle of the sector of education? If I'm talking about education, education is thirty-five percent here, and I want the central angle here. Again, hundred percent is. 360 degree if i am talking about 35% that would be simply 3.6 into 35 and that's going to give me my answer as 126 degrees right so the data is this simple here what is the other thing that i wanted to talk about here when i uh, you know when we were doing this kind of question one day so i gave the you know i gave the question to the students and i asked them the what's the ratio of expenditure on food to saving if the household income is rupees 1 lakh 20000 so they started calculating okay okay we need to calculate it for food we need to calculate uh, and uh, the ratio of saving so food represent how much percent food represent 15% so let us calculate here okay 15% of 1 lakh 20000 and then started calculating it for saving saving it's 10% there then start calculating for 10% of 1 lakh 20000 so after calculating 15% of 1 lakh 20000 and then you calculate 10% of 1 lakh 20000 that is not required dear kids remember this that when you are talking about pie chart what's the complete data for example if i ask you what is 20% of 100 find me the ratio between 20% of 100 and 80% of 100 20% of 100 is going to give you 20 only and 80% of 100 is also going to give you 80 only you don't need to calculate the percentage why 
because whatever part you are taking out you are taking out from the same big portion right from the complete thing you are calculating you are taking out that percentage is from one thing only so you need not calculate why because you know uh, 15% of 120000 and upon 10% of 1,20,000 this is how it will look like so you know this will automatically get cancelled 100 will automatically get cancelled so when you are dealing with percentages just write the percentages here 15% is to 10% you'll cancel this person 15 is to uh, 10 you're going to get the answer is 3 by 2 directly so these are some techniques where the students have been missing treat the percentages right treat the percentages right you can take them in the form of you can even take them in the form of multiplication for example i ask you what is 53 percent of let us say 160 right 53 percent of 160 you have to calculate 53 upon 100 into 160 you can do it in one more way what's that way do it 50 plus 3 percent of 160 can we break the percentages like this yes we can definitely break the percentages like this what is 50 percent of 160 50% means half. You already know what is half of 160. That's 80. What is 3% of 160? 3% means you just have to multiply 3 with 16. Fine. 18 will have here and 3 ones are 3 plus 1 4. We are going to have here 480 divided by 100. So that will be a point here. This will simply give you 84.80 as the answer right you can if you are having for example you are having 79 percent how can i break this you can break it as 80 minus 1 percent if you are having 51 percent how can i make it 50 plus 1 percent if i'm having 55 percent that's way too easy 50 plus 5 percent right if i'm having if i'm having 27 percent or 27 percent can again be break uh, broken up as 25 plus 2 percent calculating 2 percent is easy 25 you can take it in fraction that's the most important part, right? Caselets, mostly you'll deal with percentages. So how to sort or how to solve those percentages? You know, treat them as fractions or as multiplications. You will be able to do the data. You'll be able to solve the data in a better way. These are some important points when you are dealing with data interpretation questions. Look at the question carefully. Simplify it. Do not get stuck on one question there. Nahi aara. So come on, you are having five parts, right? Do it. Solve the other data. Always, you know, always check out the data. Okay, uh, if you are having, for example, if you are having the data in the form of table, if you have already made the, uh, uh, you know, if you have already solved the case list there, uh, what is the information that is required? Have a, you know, look at it carefully. Fine, check out the data. You have made the case list correctly, but you are not looking at the proper data. Once done, look at the data carefully. Right. These were some of the basic points and uh, we'll be continuing with some of the questions here on YouTube as well as in the class. That was all for the session today. Thank you.